This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk a little bit more about ordinals, inscriptions, and Bitcoin spam. This is something I hope to cover a bit more over the coming days. It's something we covered in the past, but I have a new take on it that I want to share. First, a little background. One Bitcoin is comprised of 100 million sats or satoshis. If you've been wondering what ordinals are, ordinals is basically just an externally imposed ordering system of satoshis or sats roughly following fifo or first in first out now this is an imaginary construct that's not part of the bitcoin protocol because what actually happens when you send or spend bitcoin or sats your utxo which is short for unspent transaction output or basically a synonym would be a chunk of bitcoin that chunk of bitcoin is destroyed and then completely new utxos and hence satoshis are created it looks something like this on chain where you have an input and you have two outputs. The second output in this case is sending change back to the original address. But what happens, this original UTXO here is completely destroyed and then two new UTXOs are minted. So it really is an artificial construct to pretend that Satoshis can be transferred. Tracking a single sat is like trying to track a single atom of gold in a bar of gold, but it's even more stupid since it is technically impossible to own or track a single Satoshi. There's also no such thing as a quote-unquote rare sat, but that doesn't stop unethical people like the owner of Bitcoin Magazine from setting up a marketplace to try to profit from idiots who want to pretend that they own single sats. This is UTXO, OTC Desk. UTXO is a company that's owned by David Bailey of Bitcoin Magazine, and he allows you to buy stupid things on here like rare sats and inscriptions. In one case, for example, these inscriptions selling a Bitcoin logo for approximately $750,000, just a JPEG. So that's ordinal theory, pretending to track single sats. Now, what are inscriptions? Inscriptions use ordinal theory to associate arbitrary data, whether text or images. I believe you can even use videos to associate arbitrary data and embed it on the blockchain and associate it with mythical single sats and thus enable what you might think of as NFTs on Bitcoin. Now, people have been interested in embedding arbitrary data on the Bitcoin blockchain ever since Satoshi included a newspaper headline in the Genesis block. If we take a look at the Genesis block, it had this hex code, for example, and if you put it into a hex to text converter, like I'll link to in the description notes below, we can see here the headline from the Times, the London Times, the Times uh, January 3rd, 2009, chance are on the brink of a second bailout for banks. And so this is how this data was embedded in the Genesis block. Now, why did Satoshi do this? The primary reason by including a dated newspaper headline in the hard-coded Genesis block, he was able to demonstrate to the world that there was no pre-mine in Bitcoin since that headline could not have existed before the 3rd of January 2009, and hence that block could not have existed. This also, this embedding of arbitrary data here also helped to remind people of the great financial crisis and how fragile the fiat financial system is. So this is really the original example of adding arbitrary data to a Bitcoin block. The particular data was added to the first transaction in the block, which is called the Coinbase. This is the same transaction that usually contains the miner reward. And there's a little space there where you can put data, for example, mined by Luxor or mined by some particular mining pool. In this case, Satoshi used it to embed this hex data. Note that Bitcoin Coinbase in a block, this has nothing to do with the crypto casino Coinbase that misappropriated the name along with misappropriating so many other things. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment and share this video with a friend or family member. Special note, you are not David. King David had eight wives, but that doesn't mean that you should. You are also not Satoshi. He put some arbitrary data in the Genesis block for a very particular reason as we've discussed, but that doesn't mean that you should put some bad clip art in a Bitcoin block just because you can. This because over the years since Satoshi left the project, Bitcoin has evolved to be the most important digital monetary asset in the world. It's like digital gold as a store of value, as we talk about many times on this channel. It's also really easy to send across digital communication channels 
like the internet. And this is one of the things that makes Bitcoin so special. Bitcoin is this life raft for the unbanked, the deplatformed, and the 8 billion human victims of central banker money. It's a beautiful gift that Satoshi gave us. It's a beautiful gift that he gave the world. And it needs to be used in a respectful and ethical manner, in my opinion, just like air, just like water, and just like the other gifts of the natural world. Just because you can afford to leave your shower running 24 seven, just to show off doesn't mean that you should do this. And just because you can pay 13,485 sats to send 546 sats and a crappy JPEG doesn't mean that you should do this either. Here's an example of a crappy JPEG, also known as an inscription. We can see uh, what it looks like. We can see what block it's in. And if we go to a block explorer, we can see that whoever made this inscription paid a fee of 13,485 sats to send just two small outputs of 546. Now, what are your responsibilities as a thought leader or flagship media property in the Bitcoin space? What if your name happens to be Bitcoin Magazine, for example? Should you actively encourage people to fill up blocks with arbitrary garbage, even if it prematurely drives up transaction fees that hurt Bitcoin adoption in developing countries. We have guys like Udi and Eric Wall sharing what they're doing through Bitcoin Magazine and through the Bitcoin conference. The problem with this is this is hurting people in emerging countries. Anita Posh talking here about how she used to onboard users on chain in Ghana, South Africa, etc. But now she's needing to stop. This was a couple months back when fees were spiking to 355 sats per V byte, and so she's had to move to Lightning to help people stack. Talking here as well about making custodial Lightning the only option when fees go this high on chain, and all that because some people think it's quote unquote fun to break Bitcoin. To add insult to injury, these inscriptions often pay lower fees than regular monetary transactions on Bitcoin, thanks to the SegWit upgrade and what's called the witness discount, which provides a fee rate that is a quarter for data that is stored in the witness part of a transaction. So this is one problem with Bitcoin soft forks. They can be good things in themselves when considered in themselves, like the SegWit upgrade and the Taproot upgrade. But when you combine them, you may inadvertently end up enabling garbage like inscriptions and other monstrosities that we'll cover in a later video. So this is yet another reason why we need to tread really carefully when it comes to future changes to Bitcoin's software. It's been clear for a long time that Bitcoin transaction fees are headed much higher over time as the block subsidy falls. This is probably what Satoshi intended as well. This is going to force many people to hire layers like the Lightning Network or Fediments or other custodial solutions or other layer two or layer three solutions that people come up with. The problem that we're seeing today is that shipcoin or VCs like David Bailey of Bitcoin Magazine and the Bitcoin Conference and his projects and his friends' projects artificially forcing these transaction fees higher prematurely and then laughing about it on Twitter while they profit from it. This is not what I personally want to see from a flagship media property in the space like Bitcoin Magazine. We have Taproot Wizards, for example, which is funded by David Bailey and his crypto VC fund called UTXO Management. Now, are inscriptions actually spam since they follow Bitcoin's main rules and pay transaction fees? Yes, I think they could be considered spam in the same way that an email can be spam follows all the protocol rules and was routed across the internet and ends up in your inbox, but it's still garbage and not something that's useful to you in the same way that this is not a useful thing to do on Bitcoin. I want my Bitcoin to be able to store value and to be able to transfer value, and I don't want to be part of games like this. Now, digital spam is notoriously difficult to stop, whether it's spam emails or spam on the Bitcoin blockchain. But I'd say the first step is just don't laugh about it and encourage it like so many people do at Bitcoin Magazine and related companies. The second step, if you have a Bitcoin mining rig, is to point your hash to good Bitcoin mining pools that give you the ability to stop spam transactions from being included in a block as ocean mining does. And this is where I'm currently pointing the hash from my ASIC. An additional step that you can take, which I haven't pursued yet, but I'm looking forward to doing, is running Bitcoin knots instead of Bitcoin core on your node. This is an alternate implementation of the same basic consensus rules. And I'll link to this in the description notes below. This is a great website to take to check out. We'll be investigating a little more detail. Website dedicated to stop spam on Bitcoin. WTF happened in February 2023. But there is a section here that talks about how you can install knots, do it yourself, or also how to put it on my node, a star nine 
or an umbral. Another useful tool to keep track of this is you can go to mempool.space and if you double click on a block, either a mind block or a block that is in the process of being mined, you can use these goggles to view which transactions are inscriptions. So here's a recent block and we can see all of the highlighted orange blocks are inscriptions that are currently taking place. And then you can use this, you can go back to the main part and take a look at where transaction fees are and you can get a rough idea of how much these inscriptions, BRC20s, etc., cetera, are, con are contributing to spam and higher transaction fees. This is the, what you wanna use right here, uh, mempool goggles, or you can just, I believe you can just double click on a block, scroll down and then use the goggle Thing here and you can see whether you want to look at descriptions, whether you want to look at coin joins, etc. Anything that's taking place in a block. So that's a great, a great way to keep track of this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comments section below. This is a really complicated topic, but I hope to slowly work through it in the days to come. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.